uh, we're going to get started. Um, I am delighted to see um, a great group of people. Um, this is going to be um, a conversation, but will also involve you um, moving with us. So, um, those of you who don't know me, I'm Deborah Davidson. I'm the director and founder of Catalyst Conversations. And I'm really pleased to um, have you all here this afternoon. Uh, we are very grateful to be hosted by MUCAD um, here at the London Art Center. And I want to extend a big thanks to Dean Richard Zalt and Wesley University for helping support this program. I'd like to thank the Cambridge Arts Council, who is our family partner and fiscal agent, as well as the Catalyst Conversations Advisory Board. And also, it's exciting to be part, again, of the Cambridge Science Festival. This is our fourth year, I think, fourth year. Um, Catalyst Conversations was founded in 2012 to open a critical path of dialogue between the arts and sciences. We present artists from many disciplines whose work resonates with science. We're very interested in connecting art and science through programs, <coughs> educational outreach, and public events like this, which demonstrate the conversation and synergy between art, science, and technology. And um, so, as I said, this is our fourth STEAM program and our fourth collaboration uh, with Cambridge Creativity Commons. So this afternoon, we're excited to discuss and experience moving our minds and to demonstrate how dance and science can foster creativity. Choreographers, uh, dancers Peter Demuro, uh, my far left, Danielle Bezinet, and PhD candidate dancer Ashley Polcano will demonstrate how the movement of our bodies can help us understand the world around us. Um, and you will literally be part of the conversation um, because you're going to be moving, not just sitting in your seats. So the three dancers will answer the three questions posed by Kyle, and each speaker will take the lead in the movement expressed by one of the questions. That will become very clear very soon. Um, it will be the impetus for all of you to move, and then um, if you're in the, in the mood and the spirit, we'll continue uh, dancing and we'll have reception of cookies and juice. So, uh, as I said, I'm Deborah Davidson. Um, about four and a half years ago, I had the idea to bring together artists and scientists to talk to each other, and that's what this is today. Thank you, Deb. Uh, I echo what Deb said. I'm very excited to be here as well with our fourth collaboration. Uh, move Your Mind, and I direct a program um, here at Lesley University called the Cambridge Creativity Commons. My name is Kyle Brown. Um, in partnership with the Cambridge Public Schools, uh, working in and out of school time to bring creativity through the arts to the students and teachers in Cambridge. Um, if you have any more questions about what that is, please ask me after, and I have a little brochure up on the back table. Um, but without further ado, I'd like to get into our program, which means introducing these wonderful presenters we have here. And they're going to do it the best themselves, so I want to pass um, the mic to Danielle. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Danielle Besnet, and I'm a dancer and choreographer and teacher. And I spend most of my time teaching at the Sage School in Foxborough, Massachusetts. It's a pre-K through 8 school, and we have a big STEAM program and a very big arts program. We spend a lot of time doing arts integration. And I also adjunct at Bridgewater State University, and I teach dance education courses as well as some intro to dance classes. And those two jobs combined have really energized my love of teaching and my love of dance. But more than that, I love curriculum, and I love to write curriculum, and I love to integrate the arts as much as possible with other subjects, particularly dance. And when I was in graduate school at NYU, I wrote my thesis on dance and science. And I just think that when you move it, for some of us, most of us, we understand it better. And I think that that's really key in teaching, and I think it's just key in life. And you're going to hear a lot about that today as we talk about how the connections can be built through movement. So um, I'm very excited to be here, and I'm going to pass the mic on. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ashley Polanco. I am a second year PhD student in chemical engineering at UMass Lowell. 
Um, but prior to grad school, I went to MIT. I got my degree in chemistry. Um, the last thing I expected to major in, because I did not like chemistry uh, before that. Um, but where did dance come in? I loved to dance my entire life. I loved performing and moving. It started off, I started off doing martial arts, actually. I did uh, karate and taekwondo for 10 years, started at the age of seven. And I really, the, my favorite part about martial arts was getting up on that stage, doing a kata with the best of my ability and just wowing everybody in the audience. And I, uh, when I was around 17 years old, I decided, you know what, I want to pursue dance. I have this, uh, this skill of being able to control my body and do martial arts. I think I can apply it in the same way as dance. So I started dancing and never looked back. And when I went to college, I joined a lot of dance teams at MIT. It's surprisingly, they have a really big dance community. A lot of scientists and engineers love arts, and they love theater, they love dance. Um, so I was very welcomed in that community. Um, when I graduated, I wanted to continue dance, and I wanted to continue it in a way that I could implement science, similar to Danielle. Um, so in 2014, uh, some really good friends of mine from college um, and I started a nonprofit organization called Geek. I don't know if anyone's ever seen this name before. It's a unique way to spell geek, but it's really to <coughs> break down these stereotypes of what it means to be a geek. Like, why should it be something negative be really, really smart? Why should it be made fun of be really smart when it's really cool that you know all these discrete things about the world? And you also have this passion for arts as well. So geek exists to inspire and educate youth. That's all of you guys and STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, mathematics. And we do so by running community programs like this one. Um, we've done uh, this program that I really love is near here in my heart called Science Can Dance. Um, we've uh, done uh, this event throughout Cambridge, Boston, even in San Francisco. And we actually have five Science Can Dance workshops coming up this summer, all right? This summer, they're totally free. All right, and they're all related to STEAM. So the first one is science, technology, engineering, mathematics. They're all on Saturdays coming up this summer. So if you go on Eventbrite slash geek, G-I-Q-E, you can register for all of those workshops. So keep that in mind. I'm done with my right introduction. Here you go. Thank you. Hi, everybody. How are you? Um, uh, I always get a little nervous talking. Uh, I'm Italian, so I talk with my hands quite a bit. But And we just talked a little bit. If you could do me a favor, if you could just like um, uh, just turn and introduce yourself to somebody you don't know yet, just just shake their hand or wave or do the fist bump or something like that. They'll make you feel a little bit Lerman Dance Exchange, 
and our, uh, um, our age range there was 23 to 70 something, but we often work with people as young as three months dancing with their mom or dad strapped on their bodies, uh, which is really fun, as, and as old as about 104, 105 we got, we got moving. Um, so I continue that tradition, and I just feel like dance is everywhere, so why not in the science world? I also run the dance complex, which is right down the street in Central Square. It's uh, seven studios now. Uh, we uh, opened our, our seventh studio on the street level, uh, so for the first time in over 25 years, you can now see the dance uh, that you used to hear only the drums were playing uh, above us all the time. And it's been a real a pleasure to come back to Boston and keep up with that. So that's it, I think. You'll find out more about us later. <laughs> Sorry, the microphone is mine. Great, thank you so much for sharing so much of yourselves. Um, and like all of us, like Peter said, if you have any other questions after the end, please stay around, dance a little bit, talk to them. We'd love to have you here. Um, so I'm going to launch into the first question. Like Deb said, we have three questions uh, with some movement in between, so hopefully we can have a little fun. Um, and the first question is, how do you make something? In this case, a movement. How is an idea manifest? How do you research or investigate the movement? Well, I'll just I'll continue my my intro in, in a way there. Um, so you hear that I like human movement in that way. So um, as an example, if you just freeze where we are, freeze, don't move, don't move, Right. And now just cha uh, change where your eyes are looking. Right. And then turn your head. Move a leg. Raise one arm slowly above your head. And drop it quickly. This is very exciting. This is how I make dances. I do very little of it. <laughs> One of my dancers is here, Kara, in the back row there. And uh, I, I in, in my most recent dances, I rarely make up very little, maybe 2% of the movement. And what I do is ask you to move for me. And so sometimes it's just on physical reaction, just like you just did. And it was kind of beautiful, huh? What did you have to do? Yeah, the sound yeah, the so, so that gets me excited, uh, and that's part of my process. Sometimes I ask deeper probing questions, and, and usually a dance for me is about a question first. Uh, the dance I made last week in Colorado uh, is, uh, was a journey dance, and about how we sometimes keep coming back to uh, the, same, the same landmark moment in our lives. And, and so in that dance, I pretty much, they kept coming back to the same position, the same tableau, uh, tableau is kind of a still uh, figure. Uh, uh, several times during the dance. So, so that was an answer to a question. Uh, it's hard for me just to make up a dance that's just uh, beautiful, although I, I'd like to think some of my dances are beautiful, but there has to be some kind of uh, probing question with that. Uh, another example and, uh, is this summer I'll be making a dance to the music by Aaron Copeland, and uh, he's a, a composer who's uh, no longer living. But 70s years ago, uh, Agnes DeMille, a famous choreographer, commissioned him to make the music uh, called Rodeo. And she made a, a story ballet about a cow poke and a cowgirl and them wanting to get together and, and uh, dance around. And, uh, and so we're changing that idea to use the music to, um, to think of what does it mean to be a pioneer? And so all of a sudden that question then spurs on reactions, responses in the dancers and allows me to make a new work that doesn't copy Agnes to know, but makes something new, and that's part of my goal. So I'm gonna build off of what you just talked about. Thank Good. you for that. Um, we, at, at the Safe School, we spend a lot of time working with the students to make the connections that are within their lives, but also their curriculum, because I talked about that we need to make those connections with the curriculum, and that's something that I'm really interested in. Um, Agnes DeMille and Aaron Copeland, a great example. Aaron Copeland, after he worked with Agnes DeMille, then teamed up with Mark Cram, and they did a piece together called Abolition Spring. And that piece is about the pioneers in moving westward and westward expansion, which is a huge topic in third and fourth grade curriculum in history. So we use that as an example to get the students interested in how does an artist react to something that's going on within the world around them, and then from that, what's going on in their own world, and what can they create as a piece of work that expresses what's happening in their world. And so we'll look at events that are happening, and it can be something very simple as they moved, or they changed schools, 
or they made a new friend, or they started a new activity. But from there, we're connecting to what an artist has done, how that has impacted history, and then how their artist work impacts their life history, or how their life history impacted their, their world. For me, it's a very similar process. I mean, I think that if you're teaching something, you have to live it and believe it, too. So what I teach them, I want to model, and I want to make sure that it, it is what I do. Most recently, the last piece that I did with my seventh and eighth graders is we just sat around and we talked about, all right, what do you think about what's impacting you right now? And the topic that was really weighing on their minds, this is going to be a big surprise, the election. Mm -hmm. And so we researched and we looked at what that meant to them. And we went to a song, and we went to John Mayer's work, and we just kind of dissected through this piece. And even more than the song itself, um, it was really important to look at the meaning of how they felt the movement. And then that turned into their, to their piece that they presented to the school. And I think that you can't create something unless you feel something, and you can't feel something unless you connect to something. And I think it's just this constant cycle. And any, any work that I've ever done has always been through that cycle. OK. So I'm going to answer the question, but then we're going to get into the first movement, which is really exciting. So I'm going to stand up, because I want to get my body warmed up. So. <laughs> All right, so can you repeat the question again? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. um, how do you make something? In this case, a movement. Mm -hmm. and how is an idea manifest? How do you research, investigate? Okay, so the majority of the choreography that I come up with now, so it's different than when I was in college and I was on a hip hop dance team and we had dance routines that were themed around different shows or we would take a piece of art, whether it was a TV show, a movie, or something, and then make it into a dance uh, routine. So it kind of told the story through our dance. Uh, so we researched that show, what was the plot, what were the characters, uh, what were they trying to convey in the story. Um, and we would pretty much act it out. So it was kind of like a dramatic type of hip hop dance. Now it's totally different than what I do with, with science and dance. Um, science and dance is all about taking these complex science ideas and breaking them down to a level where everybody can understand what age you are, right? And breaking it down to like uh, manageable parts, whether it's steps, stages, pieces, whatever it may be. So you might be asking, why is this graphic on the board today? That's the topic that we're actually going to dance. It's called free radical polymerization. It sounds super complex, but before I get into that, let's just talk about chemical reactions in general. Has everyone's heard about a chemical reaction, right? Raise your hand if you've heard of a chemical reaction. All right, because uh, somebody give me an example of a chemical reaction. That one? What's the what's the example? Vinegar and baking soda, what happens when you mix those? It bubbles up.